So now that we've actually survived chest and triceps training session on Monday, here comes on Tuesdays, everyone's favorite day. Welcome back to Decentralized Nutrition Science in the lens and context of structural violence. Once again, just a little bit of disclaimer that none of this is meant to be taken as a moral or objective virtue signaling comparison benchmark per se. This is only an account, not a dictation over the fact that health and fitness meritocracy remains an individual outreaching um, calling, not a collectivist dictation per se. So if anyone can do better, then all the more power to them. They need not further envy coming from this author's own experiences and prior injuries. So once again, as per our previous video, the entire training program actually begins with a uh, pre-warming up exercise, either one of the following. One is a superset resistance band movements, both pull and push, as well as a diamond push-up movements at the end, four times supersets of that. Or number two, a brisk walk and then a brief run on the treadmill, aiming to get anyway between 65 to 70 calories, usually under five minutes. Either that or number three is a farmer walk lunges, but instead of using dumbbells, we are using a straight bar between 25 kilograms to 27.5 kilograms. Back and forth, four laps. Either that or finally, choice number four, a pulley ski hit machine, in which this ski high intensity training machine is actually a lot more difficult than it really seems because it actually encompasses and encourages a lot of uh, push as well as pull movements from bottom down and then up. After the pre-warming of exercises, then the foam rolling session begins. Once again, to briefly reiterate, the general aim of this foam rolling session is to spend anywhere between six to eight minutes to gently impose, yet also productively and meaningfully impose the required uh, muscle fascia um, activations, muscle fascia release, on the affected regions of concern, in which that is usually the lower backs, the lateral obliques, as well as the, in some cases, not too often, the IT band, the entire IT band. However, usually it is along the lines of the hip flexors and the, and the pelvic regions, in which that is usually the regions of concern, especially since we are dealing with a lower backs component training day today. So there's that. So that's so all this is spent anyway between six to a good eight minutes, and uh, in some regions, especially for the lower backs and for the uh, for the hip flexors and or other regions of concern, this may take up to an additional up to a minute or two, depending on on the existing tightness that needs to be loosened up, and that in itself should never be rushed in any way, shape, or form. So now we begin the very first feature leg exercise or the lower back exercise. That is the Jefferson deadlift. So what we are seeing here is a maintenance attempt anywhere between six by six to all the way up to 10 by five repetitions with intensity ranging anywhere between 27.5 kilogram and all the way to 35 kilograms and that is on each side so here in this adopted variation of Jefferson's is different to that as any other conventional compound deadlifts per se in which this is actually a lift and hold technique as opposed to lifting it and then dumping it to the ground straight away instead we are holding it just a few inches away before it actually touches the ground and then lifting it back up 
in which that counts as one single repetition and repeat without touching the ground to maintain the conscious muscle to mind connection from start to finish for the entire six repetitions in which this also testifies and challenges obviously the overall grip strength. In this case here, a slightly closer stance, yet a slightly rounded back is actually preferable. So once again, individual variabilities here plays a big role because not a lot of people may find the classical strict technique of keeping the back straight at all times may be um, compatible to his or her own um, biomechanical individual biomechanics to maintain and to attain the best means of leverage. It may not confer nor produce the most leverage Here is the next exercise, which is the seated calf exercise. What is shown here is actually the lighter intensity volume load overall, which is restricted to the S5 by 6, but also in some cases, seven repetition opportunities with time under tension holding opportunities from the high ground and all the way down to the bottom. With the time with such time under tension holding opportunities ranging anyway between three seconds to five seconds of genuine authentic muscular tension holding opportunities however just for a bit of comparison's sake here is a footage that is taken back in 2018 on the exact same setup exact same exercise there is seated calves but what this footage shows is just that just to show to readers that not all seated calf machines actually imposes the exact same amount of muscular uh, intensity challenges and because not all seated calf machines may actually share and or allow the exact same range of motions from one machine to the next so as we can see here on this uh, comparison uh, older comparison footage on the right we can see that there is actually slightly more although it is quite difficult to notice but there's, there's actually a slightly more noticeably higher range of motion that is possible compared to the more recent footage that is on the left, which is, we can see here, the range of motion is somewhat slightly more restrictive, in, in which that may give a, uh, an impression that this, uh, that that seated calf machine might be easier to handle from start to finish as compared to the right. And once again, just to showcase to readers the uh, the interesting insight in that not all seated uh, calf machines or any isolation exercise machines in, in that regard may yet confer nor impose the exact same uh, muscular challenging exercises. So the next feature exercise will be the leg press machines. 6 by 6 anywhere between up to 160 kilograms and all the way up to 200 kilograms is more or less the maintenance record attempts. However, what is shown in this video here is actually an extended additional volume example in which this is an eight by five to six repetitions, all on a lower intensity level in which this is kept at entirely at 160 kilograms. Leg press, unfortunately, can be either a uh, a love or hate relationship with many people and especially this author's um, own uh, susceptibility to knee pain and or knee discomforts actually pre and also the predispositions towards abdominal um, stitches and or unexpected pressure and or pains especially amidst the uh, lowest um, pressing position will no doubt unfortunately limit the just below parallel level. One thing to keep in mind is that during legs training session, unfortunately, Tuesday's evening seems to be where the um, traffic and the overall usage of the gym equipment may be all over the place. And 
the order of exercises have to be uh, shifted around, but the overall number and the overall volume remains nevertheless the same as an overall output. This extension is unlike the smaller machines in which this is actually what I label as the isolateral leg extensions. We're just going to be using the conventional double leg simultaneous movements all in one in each and every repetition. What is shown here is an 8 by 6 to 7 repetitions on any intensity ranges between 10 kilograms to, to all the way up to 15 kilograms. Now, what is shown here in this footage is actually the lower intensity region. Why is this? Well, because there is a more realistic output as such that not every video recording session as shown in any training regime is going to be 100% all to the maximum effort because otherwise that is just unrealistic and just purely unsustainable. Hence, it gives an illusion of sense of security that it is uh, okay to go all out in, in each every time. Is that sustainable? Of course not. But it is indeed a uh, given rare possibility that there may be one day it is possible, but for other days it may not be possible. And once again, the resting time range is residing anywhere between 25 seconds to no more than 40 seconds resting before commencing another set of repetitions. So then here comes the middle of the half or the halfway training brief recuperation period in which a, um, an inclusion or an introduction of a pre-ergogenic aid or an intra-ergogenic aid is actually introduced here. Not a lot of people will agree with this. That will be the usage of aspirin, the uncoated aspirin, not the coated one. Usually anywhere between a tiny surface bite to no more than half a tablet, in which that equates to anywhere between 5 milligrams to 150 milligrams, would be pretty much the usual dosage. Not many people will agree that it is the best way or the sound I practice because of the fact that exercise and or training in general should be where inflammation should be treated as a good thing, a very good thing. But unfortunately, once again, we're not going to go through such debates or examination on such studies in detail because otherwise this entire presentation will be far too lengthy. Suffice to say, the amount of aspirin that should that may need to be taken right here in this uh, middle away session should be no more than an, an entire tablet because otherwise um, gut discomforts may or may not occur from time to time depending on once again on the individual gut settings and the physiology and metabolism. Now, before we actually begin on the front ATG Olympic bar squats, it is always almost a necessity to do the diligent foam rolling process. Once again, areas of concern and our emphasis to be, to be fascia released will be that hip flexors, the cochix or the tailbone, as well as the lateral obliques left and right before then moving downwards to the pulses on the hip flexors, the glutes, and lastly, the knees. And here we have the next biggest feature training component, another compound training component. This will be a choice between a heavy Smith lunges on the Smith machines or a custom modified Olympic bar squats as exactly the same to that as our first major compound exercise on the chest day of training. So what is shown here is decidedly that as the front ATG squats. This is a showcasing what it's like to train all the way down to failure, as we can see 
later at the end of this recording. Once again, this this type of movement is is not about halfway. It's not about cheating halfway down as halfway uh, squats per se, but it actually encourages both push as well as a pull movements. Push meaning that it is not only a uh, a groundwork movement, but also there is a pull component to it as such that we must also exercise our upper backs, upper joints, frontal, delts, the shoulders, as well as in some cases core um, component to it as well. But most of all, this is also all about the productive use of time under tension, negative holds down at the bottom, before then springing with an explosive one uh, final rep up to the top once again, in which that marks the completion of one set. This will be where, uh, unfortunately, joint pains and connective tissue resilience will starting to take its toll. So, hence, the amount of uh, resting time will, of course, we know that be lengthened to that to almost over one minute. This is also considering the fact that we are, we have to recuperate the nervous system as well as the psychology and, of all things, psychology. This all this video is not about a showcase of of ego or arrogance. This is just a message for imploration for one for anyone to actually exercise their truest capacity to authenticity. Ask themselves whether or not they're actually exercising their fullest intent, intently as such with a mindset towards productivity. Am I resting sufficiently without wasting anyone's time or my own time? Am I actually embracing and or utilizing the most of time under tension and negative hold opportunities to exert and to impose the right muscle stimuli? So this is where the testing moment begins as authentic failure. Just notice just how slow to the point whereby it, it is impossible to actually recoordinate and to recompensate everything just to lift the bar back up. And that is that. That is simply a humble showcase of a compound exercise down to their failure. So next, so next is the adductors and or abductors exercise, in which this is a uh, more or less a quad dominant exercise or an, or, or an IT band um, dominant exercise with intensity ranges anywhere between 45 kilograms, which is the lower regions, all the way up to 55 kilograms. And once again, just like the seated cows, a lot of people actually underestimate over the fact that this is this can be just as challenging as that of any other um, isolated leg machine exercises. Once again, to accentuate productivity, the intensity must be high enough as such that it promotes meaningful muscle um, muscle inflama inflammatory reactions for the muscle protein synthesis to begin, and yet also it must be light enough as such that we must allow the fullest range of motion to complete. So what we've shown here is a 50 kilograms to 55 kilogram alternating attempts in between sets and whenever possible, time under tension holding opportunities. Once again, just a bit of a disclaimer that, that this video has to be taken on a separate day because of the fact that it is simply impossible and unrealistic for anyone to be able to properly record and to film the entire day of training session without some means of technical errors or technical mistakes, disruptions, and or just uh, scheduling inconveniences that gets in the way. Once again, depending on the usage and the traffic around in and around the gym, this exercise, which is adductors or abductors, may yet be substituted with another leg extensions or leg curls. Then next we have the leg curls, anyway between 5x5 five five to 6x5 six five formatting with intensity load anyway between 45 kilograms to, only in some rare cases, depending on the connective tissues, readiness and recoverability, up to 55 kilograms. 
Now, is that realistically achievable? Consistently, absolutely not. Leg curls is one of those exercises in which it may actually rely on a lot of other compensation muscle groups just to complete the entire range of movements. So in this case here, the abdominals as well as other stabilizer uh, muscle groups. This demands a lot of individualization on how they situated their ankle and the degree of the angle, etc., etc. In this case here, so as a finishing accessory shown here is a superset pull-up sessions followed by an Otis up press movement on the ground, starting off with up to four or five reps if even if that is really possible followed by lying on the ground or test up press movements using a 20 kilogram plate with up to four repetitions before resting time begin anywhere between 30 to 45 seconds depending on the level of exhaustion exerted thus far this superset um, exercise since it actually is very taxing on the core components may not be ideal only under the humble opinion of this author who have actually have high prone to have abdominal cramps or those who are quite sensitive to certain core and or abdominal exercises such as sit-ups uh, in particular a little bit too much of attention over time especially around about given around about second or third superset is where the cramping and the amount of, uh, of the tension may be a little bit too much to the point whereby it may even impose a uh, severe obstruction. And another concern with this exercise as well is that it may not be uh, appropriate for individuals who actually have gotten used to exercise with, uh, with some food contents in the stomach. What this author actually prefers to do is to actually perform no more than three supersets in total that is so that will be consisting of no more than 12 to 15 reps of of the pull-up movements on the highest bar followed by another no more than 12 repetitions on the Otis ups movements because once again individual predisposition towards severe abdominal cramping may yet occur and may yet differ from person to person and not many people will notice and, and as such that the Otis Ups movement also introduces another stress, another stressor element to the uh, core system as well. So even though that, yes, it may seem as though the, the disorder can only do half reps, but the amount of tension and the amount of challenge that is already being imposed upon the core will be also be translated throughout everywhere else, upper posterior chain. So hence it's a, uh, this superset exercises is actually not to be taken lightly at all. So having done all that, including the finishing accessory exercise, then comes the foam rolling session. Once again, to reiterate and repeat, this is going to be exactly the same as we did in the back in the beginning of our training day. And uh, once again, to promote much muscle fascia release on the same regions of concern, the hip flexors, the quads, the lower components, as well as the, the cossacks or the tailbones, lower backs, in some cases lower backs, but most likely also the hip flexors and the, um, and the lateral obliques side of the core. So having said all that, well, that concludes the second of the four training day sample in the life of cyclical keto plus intermittent fasting principle. This is only, after all, a sharing of N equals 1 insight of what it means to be 1. Productive, to train intently and authentically, also to the point of true, genuine, mechanical, as well as fitness training failures hence once again if anyone think they can do better feel free by all means to keep to their own selves and prioritize their own contentment without raising contempt 
After all, this is all about training intently, not training intensely. There is a big difference. Leave it forward and thank you for watching.